Hey guys, I've been threatening for a while to do a video on translating conventional lures into fly fishing flies. And basically, what I'm going to concentrate on today is saltwater. And, you know, part of this comes from kind of teasing you guys ahead from the last video from Port O'Connor and figuring out exactly for me. Um, what would work and what would not in a really down and dirty quick mode. So let me just uh, start off with a story. And this comes from right before, I guess about a year before uh, Hurricane Harvey hit down around uh, Rockport, Port O'Connor. I mean Port O'Connor, uh, Port Aransas. And I dropped into a uh, conventional fishing shop. Very nice guy back there, and he, uh, we got to talking, it was all conventional, and, um, I told him I was pretty much all I did was fly fish, and he said, he just looked at me and kind of just, just kind of gave me a sideways look, and I said, what? what, what's the big deal, and he goes, well, I don't know why you would want to take something that's so hard and make it even harder, but really, that's what you do sometimes when it comes to fly fishing, especially places like the Texas Gulf Coast. You take something that's pretty hard to begin with, and then you make it even harder. But, as you know, fast forward, when I do my reports, at the end, I have a scroll. And that's a TPWD fishing scroll that goes through all the areas of the coast and then the inland and the lakes and stuff like that. doesn't do rivers, but anyway, that's another topic. So, what I always profess is that you learn to translate what, what the, the information you get there into information you can use in the flies you use, the depths you fly fish, and things like that. Of course, the hardest thing about translation is translating depth because it's so hard to get deep on a fly rod. Unless you, you know, got, just depends on how deep you're going, but it, it gets difficult. So... While I was in that same store, backtracking again, back to uh, uh, Port Aransas, this guy had some big old worms on um, uh, on the hooks on one of his one of his displays. I mean, they're about oh, they were I think they were ten inches black and twelve inch black, and maybe some purple too. And so I got totally curious. What are what are these rubber plastic worms doing on the Texas Gulf Coast? Well. It turns out that this guy had zeroed in on, and I, I hope he's not around anymore because I'm giving this away. I'm just totally giving this away. He had zeroed in on a time and a place where you could catch gator trout, Gulf gator trout, that means in the Gulf of Mexico, off the uh, Port Aransas jetties. And he had a actual uh drawing uh, what, do they, what do they call it just a, a drawing of the, the original layout of the jetties and what you find there is that there are some turnouts from when they were building the jetties and it probably it's either turnout for when they were building it and turn the trucks around or or set the set the cranes or whatever they had to do or it's literally a design there to keep keep the uh, current from washing away the, the, the granite rocks. So I don't know why that's there, but it has some turnouts, what we call turnouts when we go to to uh, to the uh, dams in Texas and we see those or we call them turnouts a lot of times because they were, are literally turnouts for trucks that, that built the dam. And they they go under as, you know, the dam right as the water rises at the dam. But anyway, that's that. At those turnouts, he proclaims that right after the first November cold front, like right after Thanksgiving, November, December, has to be a little bit later in the year, you can conventionally fish with those big long worms. And guess what they are? Sand eels, black sand eels. So you can, you can do that conventionally, speaking now to the dark side, and catch gator, ocean run, speckled trout, which is... Uh, super special special fish really way different from the uh, not way different but significantly noticeably different from the speckled trout you find inshore so pretty cool 
Well, how do you translate something like that, okay? I mean, really, how do you translate it? My thinking, I've not done it, but what you want is something like this. Just take your rabbit fur like this, maybe jazz it up a little bit with a little bit of flash, real thin flash, not the thick stuff. Make it as long as possible, so we're talking 8 to 12 inches long, and then sink and line it, and maybe you're in the game. That's that's something that's it could be possible. Who knows? So that's one idea about translating on something that's totally speculative on the Texas Gulf Coast. Now for less speculation and more reality. You know that if you go to the Texas Gulf Coast, one of the most reliable things you can throw day in and day out is gold spoon. Simple. Effective, cheap, and it works. Well, we tie go we tie or buy gold spoons and all color spoons anywhere, all kinds of varieties of these. These are the simple translations on, on some from conventional fly. You know, so that's simple, right? Add some of those to your box. Now let's let's kick it up a notch. How about my favorite mirror lure? Well, there's a popular one right there, right? Nice. Has a rattle, which slight advantage with the rattle for sure over a fly. But who's to say that right there won't do the trick? This is a freshwater one. I don't have a salt one in here right now. Who's to say that won't do the trick? I mean, really? Why? Why wouldn't it? Okay. So, using what I had as information and, and, and trying to cross over from conventional to fly on my last trip, what I did was I tied some flies. And, you know, one of the big live baits on the coast is croakers, right? Well, if you know what a croaker looks like, it looks a lot like that right there. And so that, that to me, I was like, I'm going to tie me some croakers. And that's what I did. It's this guy right here. Embedded in there, though. You can't hear it. High pitch rattle. I can't hear it. Half deaf and rock and roll. But anyway, there's a rattle in there. So, this is the way this fly I'm getting ready to show you started out. Looking nice and neat and beautiful. Runs just like this. But, after a little while, let me see if I can find it over here. Woo. It's like part of the landscape now. It's so obliterated. Let's see where that guy is. He's here somewhere. Oh, here's a. Oh, let me show you this real quick. Another great. If you're if you're out there speculating, speculating, uh, out there prospecting, this is a great mirror lure um, that I bought off of another uh, guide in, in CA, Captain CA. I forgot his last name, but anyway, um, used that caught fish in uh, Mississippi. And then uh, it works it works quite well in uh, Texas too. So anyway, that's that's another mirror. I, you know, I'm a I'm a mirror lure freak. I'll admit it. Now I'm gonna find that fly that I was gonna show you that got totally. And here's here's another one of those guys that I tied just for for dark situation, dark weather, or right, when the sun's just coming up or just going down. Also works at the jetties. Got some purple in it. Very nice. That's that. I don't know what I do with that darn fly. Let me see if I can find him. He's here somewhere. Like I said, he's so shattered that uh, he became like part of the, uh, the urban landscape here. Let me pause for a second. Go find that fly. And I'll show you what happens. When okay, so this is how life started for this fly I'm getting ready to show you. Started kind of looking like this. You know, nice. Just kind of Purdy. Make sure you don't tie them too thick. Make sure you trim off those little hairs that are hanging down on the bottom. But when it gets wet, it starts to tighten down. And there's a rattle between the eyes on this one too. But see how light it is. It's just really, really light. Here's how. Here's how. The fly that I used ended up. That's speckled trout and a couple of redfish. This is what you get when you get it right. 
So that is how <laughs> it's a, I, I should just throw it, I'll throw it away after this, but I couldn't believe exactly. And for this one, you can see I had a loop knot tied in it. That gives it more action. You got to have a fast retrieve. You're pulling, and, and as you saw in the previous video on Port O'Connor, I was, I was fanning on the shoreline and stripping fast because any bait that's coming out of there is running for its life, right? Well, this one didn't quite get away. I'd say that's about 10 to 12 speckled trout in the 8 to 14 inch range right there. You can see the, <laughs> the rattle starting to stick out. That's a pretty loud rattle, actually. And uh, it uh, it's over. That fly is done. So guys, that's what you want to do. Take what you read on the TPWD reports. Translate that from, from something easy, a mirror lure, <laughs> something real easy. And make your life difficult. Translate it into a fly like this and see what happens. I, you know, a lot of guys will go in there and do a, a small crab or a... a clouser or a, a uh, shrimp pattern well who's to say when these guys are, are used to eat, they eat these so why wouldn't they eat this i mean it's just normal natural that, that if they're eating that they'll eat this so it's just one other thing to add to the menu as far as i'm concerned it's not the, the answer for everything but if you can tie a fly like that with a rattle in it you probably got a really good chance of scoring some speckled trout on the Texas in inshore Texas Gulf Coast and these flies you know there's not just a one trick pony these guys will work on the jetties too for all other kinds of fish it's very uh, very universal appearance in the in the actual um, profile and the uh, action and the uh, it's not a sinker now it, it just gets down in the, the mid column about a foot under the water and so you stay out of the grass and stuff in the inshore but anyway that's how it works Thanks for watching, guys. I'm glad I could get this video out to you on translating some of the uh, saltwater lures into saltwater flies. And we'll continue this probably maybe in the spring if, if I get bored and we get snowed in this weekend. I can't believe it. Um, then we'll continue it sooner, but on freshwater and showing you what we can do with freshwater flies for bigger fish, whether it's a uh, striper, um, you know, large bass and things like that and believe me a lot of these other same things come into play thanks for watching make sure you subscribe to the uh, youtube channel or and or visit www.texasflycaster.com see you next time guys